Hi, this tutorial covers a type of paradox called Simpson's paradox. So let's just start with a, a definition of what Simpson's paradox is first. So um, a Simpson's paradox, paradox is, is when two data sets are subdivided, a numerical measure for the first data set can be consistently higher than for the second, but when whole, the numerical measure of the second data set is higher than the numerical measure of the first. All right, so let's take a look at an example now. Um, it involves baseball. Um, so consider two Boston Red Sox baseball players, Mike Lowell and Jacoby Ellsbury. In 2007, Ellsbury hit 353, or hit with a 353 batting average. Um, if you're not familiar with baseball, what batting average means is that, you know, if we change this to a percent, that would end up being 50. Uh, 35.3%, 35.3%, and what that means is that um, in 35.3% of Ellsbury's at-bats, he ended up getting a hit, so he got on base. Then in 2008, he hit 280, so that means 28% of his at-bats he got on base. Okay, in the same years, Lowell in 2007 hit with a 324 batting average, and in 2008 he hit um, 274. Okay, so if we compare the two, Ellsbury had a higher average in 2007. He also had a higher average between the two players in 2008. So Ellsbury would have a better two-season batting average, right? Wrong. So let's see where Simpson's paradox comes into play here. Okay, so if we take a look now at just the raw numbers. So instead of just giving the percentages, we're going to give both um, the number of hits and the number of at-bats. Okay, so in 2007, Ellsbury had 41 hits in 116 at-bats. In 2008, he had 155 hits in um, 554 at-bats. Okay, and then in the 2007-2008 category here, simply just adding up the hit total to get 196 and the at-bats to get um, uh, 670. Okay, so now if you look at Lowell, we have the same breakdowns here, okay? But you can see that his two-year batting average, Lowell's two-year uh, two batting average was 304 compared to Ellsbury's um, 293. So, although Ellsbury hit for a higher average in 2007, so we can see that that average is a lot higher, his sample size, which in this case was his number of at-bats, was much lower, much lower than Lowell's. So even though he had a a much higher average, it was based on much fewer um, at-bats. So really what happens is that this batting average, which is pretty high, was weighted, so Lowell's 2007 year was weighted a lot more than Ellsbury's 2007 um, at-bat. So this is an example of, of Simpson's paradox because although it looks like Ellsbury hit better in, in um, both years, his combined average was not better um, because of this small sample size here. Okay, so some, sometimes data collected from different size samples can be compared. Um, if the difference in sample size is great, Simpson's paradox might present itself. So be a little wary if they're combining or if they're comparing data sets with much different size samples. Um, so beware, Simpson's paradox can be used in, to intentionally distort and misrepresent data. Um, so in, in the baseball example, probably not the end of the world if, if you did make that conclusion. But a lot of times, um, or sometimes data can be used, um, can, can be kind of aggregated like that to show what people want to show instead of the uh, kind of looking at the big picture of things. So that has been the tutorial on Simpsons Paradox. Thanks for watching.